so this is my energy update video. So I've got a whole list here and it might be short, it might be long, I don't know, but I've been wanting to do a video for the last couple of days. In fact, this week, this week has been hell week, I tell you what. Oh my goodness, like retrograde and all the rest of it. I mean, like there would be no video time long enough for me to explain to you what's happening in Marie's life, right? Or what's happened. But I know that we've all been the same. Like this is not, this is not a one person story here. This is a collective, right? So we are at critical mass with the chaos. Let's just call this Sekhmet's chaos month because in a way this is Sekhmet's se uh, season because she's coming in, the dark mother. She's really churning up all of that darkness to the surface because she hunts the darkness and she devours it okay and she with her sacred Sekhmet flames she transforms that darkness into light that is why she's an alchemist a powerful healer you know and, and that's what we're here to do at this point right so we've got two experiences going on here we have uh, the what the way showers um, those that have kind of like come here to hold space at this time doesn't mean we're not going through our journey we are but we have done maybe a little bit more work than others for good reason because we were supposed to be the ones that hold it down for everybody right now or almost like to steady the raft so everybody can jump on. I mean, in a way, I'm just being shown a vision, vision of Noah's Ark. Oh God, does, does that mean anything to anybody? Noah's Ark. So we're jumping on Noah's Ark because we are indeed in the floods. And I'm going to speak about the water in a moment. But first of all, let's talk about the fire. So that's exactly what we're doing. We are steadying the foundations for those that have been walking their spiritual path for some time. That is that we needed to have a strong center within us because that's how we hold the frequency, the 5D consciousness and beyond. Because if we're all unstable, then what now? Do you know what I mean? So, of course, there are others that are waking up and there are others that are still sleeping, but they're about they're about now getting quite a shock because it, it's happening. We're all popping like popcorn at different times. So it doesn't matter where you're at on your journey. This is not a competition by any means. But what I, what I do want to stress is that we're all going to end up at the top of the mountain together. We're all going to tee up at the top, much like my pyramids here. We're all going to get to there right? So there's a very, there's a lot of chaos going on because we're being fast-tracked. How do you get millions of people to tee up at the top all at the same time? Well, first of all, it was COVID that came in and, and awakened so many of us. That was actually a blessing. And then now we've got all of this chaos ramping up. And of course the riots and the wars and the blah, blah, blah. It's the mass destruction of everything that we uh, don't want anymore. The, the structures, you know, um, the divine masculine in the shadow structures, they are burning to the ground. And there is a lot of rage within people that is coming out now, but rage is very, very transformative as, as I've spoken about a lot with Sekhmet. However, we are in a position or a point right now where the fire can burn and destroy and we like, there's no stopping it. A forest fire will go and go and go. Um, and Sekhmet was also, will, it will also be the same if you have not tamed your Sekhmet within or tamed your power or harnessed your power, your flames will burn out of control and so will she until you pull her back. But the chances are you're not going to be able to. So that's the difference between rage burning out of control and the path and the journey is to bring the, 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 the flames into um, a, a place of um, stability. So then you can, you can have the wrath of Sekhmet, but in a powerful way. Um, means to an end way. And what I mean by that is you're working in an alchemical way with the fires. So you're like, yeah, you know, kind of like invoking Sekhmet and the wrath of Sekhmet, you know, which is you. And like, you know, I command, I call in, this is what's gonna happen. I burn all the shadow to the ground and then I harness my fires, right? Rather than just spewing and vomiting your stuff everywhere, which is not good. And that's kind of what's happening in the world. So there's a big portion of the collective which are doing that, but there's a big portion, a bigger portion of us that know how to harness our fires. So do you understand that your purpose is very, very important? Even if you've just watching this video and you've woken just a little, or you've been like me on your pathway for a long time, you know, we, we're all, we all got a powerful job here and it's exciting. So this is where we're all going to step into action, inspired action action to hold this massive critical portal of change that we're going through right now. So fire is a big thing. Chaos is a big thing. And I keep being shown, now I'm switching over to Avalon a little bit here through Keridwen. Keridwen is a dark mother and she is also likened to um, Sekhmet and um, she's the witch, the crone and also the maiden, but she's a powerful, powerful, um, uh, what's the word? Alchemist, because she works with her cauldron 
And I just keep seeing this cauldron, but at the moment it's spewing molten lava and it's just, it's just overflowing because that's the chaos of the world. But she's still stirring the cauldron, which, which tells you that this is all divine orchestration. This is all divine pur purpose. In truth, there is no fear here because everything is ordained and everything is exactly as it should be. Even Keridwin's um, uh, cauldron that is overflowing with molten lava, let it flow, let the rage burn everything up because that's what needs to happen. And that is what this message about today is a lot. I'm gonna get into this. I can feel this actually might be quite a long energy update, but like, this is about like letting go as well about the death rebirth and resurrection process and i'm going to get into that in a little bit on more of our personal experiences with what's going on with all this chaos energy so now where we are in the middle of august right just before the full moon it was always said that we were going to have a massive uprising um purge surge expansion of our shadow now what does that mean for you that means that you're going to feel a revisit to old energy old ways maybe old old uh mindsets coming up you know you're starting to view the world how you used to and you're like hang on a minute this i've dealt with this why is this happening again you know a massive triggers which bring this it's like a hot flash of energy that comes up and you're like wow where did this come from? So it feels really big, this kind of like uprising of this old energy and old old um, habits, patterns and all the rest of it that you might be experiencing, but it is for the last time. It's, it's almost like the biggest push is the final push, right? A bit like having a baby, which is exactly what this is all about. So you may be experiencing things in your life, okay, right now, which are coming up and that the retrograde had a lot to do with that. So you might be experiencing things in your life that's coming up. And my advice to you in this moment is do not believe the hype understand and know from your sense of mastery for your divine sight um, and, and your heart, understand and know what's really going on here. Zoom out that this is just a purge. You are not going back. You are not going back to what you once had, which you hated. You know what I mean? Nothing like that. All is well. So you need to keep it in very, very uh, perfect perspective from an energy perspective. Um, viewpoint, right? Because because what's happening now is your own personal pur uh, purging process for the last time. So now we're leading up to the full moon on the 19th, which is really affecting, as I say, Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, and you know, so on and so forth. But we are all going to feel this, right? So now it's a final closure on contracts. So now going beyond, you know, like, I'm just going to say people, places, behaviors, scenarios. It's a final revisit to close. And I'm going to share with you my story, which is going on, which is going to probably feel really like basic and like eye roll because I'm going to talk about my cat. <laughs> I have, in fact, they're over there. I have four Maine Coons, right? Now I have a lot of familiars in this house and I have two dogs to hold it down as well. But my Maine Coons, two females, two males, they are, they help, they're very, very 5D consciousness. And um, I, they are my familiars and each one of them holds a space for me as I do them. And they, they're my biggest messengers. So when I see the pride shifting and, and moving, I take a lot of channel and, and message from that as to what's going on out there. It's been absolute fucking chaos in this house. <laughs> my God. Sorry, I don't mean to swear, but I do. Um, so I have the two females are here. They're holding it down at home. They've barely left the house. Now the other two, okay, which are the males, right? We have one who's claimed his throne in this house because the other one, Odin, is basically been, he's a Roma and he's a space clearer. So he's been out in the streets for ever since he was born, he's a Roma. So many people steal him, so many houses he goes to and he gets, he just lums there and chills there, cleans and always comes home. But this time he hasn't. I've been with this cat for lifetimes. His words were, I, I didn't like him roaming in past lives and I didn't and I still don't like him roaming in, in this life. Many animal communication conversations with him. And that's that's been the lesson. So anyway, his energy came in very, 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 very strongly over uh, Lion's Gate. This whole situation of him not being here and the whole situation of like people across the road have kind of enticed them into his house and he, he's no longer here. So you can imagine what that's brought up inside of my humanness, right? Right. 
I feel betrayed by him. I feel that someone has taken something very, very dear from me, like my child. Um, I feel angry at the people because I feel that they shouldn't have done that, right? Because they, they knew what they were doing, that it was somebody else's cat and so on and so forth. So the anger and the rage at some somebody else because I want to blame them and, you know, and all of the things. But you see, what's happened in this house now is actually divine alignment and an up-leveling because that's the humanness. The truth of the matter is... Odin is a very, uh, he's the least evolved out of all of these cats and he's a bully cat. He needs to be in a house with females only. So over there, there's two women and a female Maine Coon who's a kitten. Like, go figure. So off he's gone over there, right? And now the house is restored in its balance because now I only have three. Marie loves a number three, but like not for this reason. And Ra, Ra Harakti, my big male, he's taken ownership of this house and the two females, there's a little harem underneath them. Ayahuasca and, and Freya are like, happy days underneath him so so actually energetically there has been a uh what's the word like a takeover in the house and one's been kind of like gone and being kicked out the pride but there's there's like an order there's an energetic uh, cosmic order to this right but marie is having an absolute shit fit because i feel the humanness of it all right so I needed to share that with you because that is really important that we give our human enough time and energy to experience what they need to experience because pain is real, grief is real, loss is real. And I feel absolutely heartbroken that I've lost, lost my child and that, that he's living across the road and he's never going to come back again. And, you know, that that's I'm going to allow that feeling, that that energy, that process, because now with Odin, I've been with him for lifetimes. He's been with me for lifetimes. I've now closed on that contract. OK, because now all of the lifetimes before I didn't like him roaming. So somewhere I was being needy, somewhere I was holding on so very tight that I needed to let him go. So it's not just the cat, is it? I needed to let something very dear to me that it was not happier, clinging on. Um, I've got to let it go. And that's what I've done or that's what I'm doing. And it is so hard. So the reason I share this story with you is because I know many of you have lost loved ones. I know any, and many in my very, very close circle have lost loved ones and they're going through a massive grieving process. So they go beyond cats and four-leggeds, two-leggeds, you know? And there's a grieving process for those that haven't lost anybody. They're actually feeling it, you know, just in grieving their old lives. So where does all the violence and the chaos come in the world? Because everybody's grieving. Do you know what I mean? That's where, with, where this comes from because where there's grief, there's anger right? And where there's anger, there's grief. So it's unprocessed wounding. So this is where the divine feminine is coming in a lot because I want to now bring in the water. Now I'm holding a group, the creatrix codes of Sekhmet and Hathor. And this month for me, I'm holding it in this month on the 22nd. Have a look at the write-up. I'll get into that later. Anyway, I'll talk about that later. But that's, that's who I'm working with, Sekhmet and Hathor. Why? Because we're working with the waters of Hathor, which is all to do with the heart and also, also to do with the womb and the divine feminine. And we're also working with the fire of Sekhmet. So it's really taming and calming those, soothing those fires with the water and allowing everything to come into balance, right? Observe what the world is showing you right now. For me, I have been in torrential rain and floods in Cape Town since I got back from the UK. I was in the UK, never stopped raining. I have just been surrounded probably for the last year, 18 months with water. And even my house, okay, is actually flooding water through the ceilings. So for me, I think I might be in the womb right now. But my point is, is observe what water is doing around you because that is the divine feminine making her presence known within all of us. You know what I mean? So... So that's a very, very soothing thing that's happening. But now we're talking about Sekhmet and Hathor. The two of them are very, very powerful divine feminines. They're not separate of one another. They're much the same of the goddess. When uh, righteous rage is ignited, Sekhmet ste ste steps forward. But when the sacred sexuality of the creatric co codes of the womb need to step forward um, and we go into the stars of the Palladians and, or the, the Palladian mothers, ha Hathor steps forward. So there's this beautiful dance between the fire in the water now what does that do it brings balance within your being it brings balance within your system so now I want to bring in Ma'at I'm going to make September Ma'at month and I'm going to be sharing with you a lot of her teachings because once you have balanced um, the fire and the water Sekhmet and Hathor have come into balance within you then you are able to live by Ma'at Ma'at is the goddess of justice law order cosmic truth 
balance, reconciliation. It's judgment day. It's judgment day. You can't get to that point. Because remember when the Egyptians died and they basically dropped their bodies, they went straight to the weighing of the heart with Ma'at. Your heart had to weigh the same as her feather. And if it didn't, it meant that you hadn't lived in joy and you hadn't brought others joy. And that's that's how you get to the gates of Osiris. You don't get given pass, pass go to the afterlife until you've basically come there and you've had your, your card ticked, as it were. So this is where we're at, but in an earthly understanding, in a physical incarnation understanding, we are now balancing the books. So think about that. The contracts, the 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 uh, contracts with other people. I know that there is so much anger. I've I have witnessed so many fights, verbal fights. One was at my daughter's school. I've just you know I've just they're all around me. Everyone's shouting at each other on on social media. People are fighting, and there's so much conflict and rah rah. You know, and it's like and and that is like. It, there's just so much. So now we need to bring the waters in to calm that, okay? Because this is where this is where Ma'at brings in the um, what's the word? Reconciliation. At some point, those that have okay, put it this way: those that are dishing it out and maybe not be in be in full alignment with their truth, and are kind of the perpetrators the ones that are giving they get that everything's if they're gonna have to be called to justice okay and you know equally so for us as well we also have to stand in our authentic selves as well because if we're hiding and carrying away from the bully and we're just basically being small then we're also not being authentic so all of these things are going to be coming out in the wash with the water being burnt away by the fires so allow Sekhmet and Hathor to kind of like weave in and out of you to bring about a very very powerful understanding of what it is to be in union because this is essentially where we're moving to now we are talking about union so when Ma'at comes in next month and I'll be sharing a lot with Ma'at um, because I feel that that is going to be the uh the real foundational factor of bringing all of this energy down if we can look at this sorry mirrored on my video if we can look at this this triangle here okay this pyramid if we could turn it round that way so it kind of like Ooh, look heart <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do with my face oh look that's nice Ah, oh, I've never been able to do that before. Okay, try not to get a fear of the giggles, Marie. Anyway, let's just do that, okay? That's what we need to do. Bringing all of this energy and this chaos and everything like that through the fire, then through the water, soothing. And then when we point it down into the earth, I suppose in a way, Ma'at is really going to help you ground into the stability of justice, order, balance... Balance is a big one. You know what I mean? Cosmic truth. You have to live by the laws, right? Reconciliation. Now, reconciliation with Ma'at is, is one I've kind of brought in. I'm an upholder of Ma'at. So is Hathor. So is Sekhmet. We are here about the truth, okay? And we are here about justice. And we are massive protectors in our energy. This is what I do. This is what I get out of bed for. I, I, I look at things and I'm like, that's not fair. Fairness, justice, order, all of that is coming in. But if you don't get right on your karmic um, replays, as it were, then you're not going to be able to move into my up month, basically. Do you know what I mean? So this is really, really, really powerful time. So um, I want to just leave now with one final thing. I've written here, let it go so it can be something else. Now, this is what I'm talking about, the death, rebirth and resurrection codes, right? I'm going to go back to my cat because he's a soul member that I have been with him for lifetimes. I kind of think that maybe he wasn't a cat in a lifetime. I think maybe he was one of my children. Do you know what I mean? You know, it, it just the, the devastation of just feeling that that ending is just it's a lot. So I'm going to sit with that and work with the full moon and let that wash away. Um, so also just with that, because I'll probably do a full moon um, uh, energy update with the full moon and everything I'm sharing with you now. When we get to there on Monday, like like that's what the moon's been bringing in for all of us. It's like a sudden in your face, deal with it. And this is what's happened with the cat. I haven't even spoken to my neighbors or anything like that. I've done anything with it, but it's been on my mind. It's been resting heavy in my heart because I'm like, well, 
you know, what should I do about this situation? And then it just exploded a few days ago where the neighbor got hold of me and I had to deal with it. Do you know what I mean? And then it just brought it all to the surface. So there's going to be things like that that's going to play out in your everyday life that, um, you know, you're going to be forced to like, boom, deal with this shit. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So expect the unexpected, expect those sudden bursts of, um, uh, experiences to happen and it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's meant to happen. It's for your best and greatest good. Okay. So now let it go so it can be something else. If I hold on to this, I am preventing the resurrection. If I hold on to things like this, and I think that this is actually symbolic to show me just how it's done, how we need to gracefully just allow ourselves to die. You know, what are you dying to surrender? I'm dying to resent, surrender this. I'm dying to surrender control. I'm dying to surrender the belief system that people are out to get me because they're not. Because in truth, everything is divine. I'm dying to surrender the illusion because I do know it's all bullshit. But for some reason, I'm still living in it. Do you know what I mean? And I'm dying just to resurrect, really. Do you know what I mean? So how we go through that process is, is basically when you go to sleep at night, put your head on the pillow, you don't fight sleep insomniac you probably do but like you don't fight sleep you go to sleep you go astral travel you wake up in the morning effortless that's what we have to be like in the bigger thing so i need to let odin go and i need to hit for him to go and find his true happiness so the very thing that i want which is happiness in this house can be restored maintained everyone's happy everyone's got their their you know their happy ending beginning ending and beginning so let it go whatever's going on with you let it go so it can be something else because that's what we want at the end of the day there's no need to hold on to it so use the full moon energies blessings and gifts of the frequency of that powerful moon because it's a super moon as well and it's really coming in hot so get your surfboard and get on top of that wave and get everything that you know squeeze the juice out of it you know what i mean it's it, it's for you so now the creatrix codes, um, the cre the creatrix codes, I always forget what I call these things. The creatrix codes of Sekhmet and Hathor is happening on the 22nd of, um, of August, next week, Thursday. And it's a small intimate group. And cause I like to do that so I can teach, you know, and it's exactly this. It's to harness your fire, your water, to understand more about the water element, understand more about fire, probably bring in, bring in a bit of Avalon as well, actually, cause it's all oneness in the same, but it's really working with Sekhmet and Hathor. And, and I purposely put it in on the 22nd because that's a bit of a portal, but I, I purposely put it in the 22nd because I would like us to now kind of like integrate great and embody and make sense of our experiences so far working with Hathor and, and Sekhmet in a very strong way bringing those frequencies online so we can then um, bring online to be lived by um, up frequencies and I'll be doing a lot of stuff with Mart in in September so if you are interested, please do get in touch because I will be closing the booking soon because I just want to keep the group um, at a, a certain um, a certain attendance. Um, so yeah, and it's a special rate of $88. So I'm keeping it Lionsgate, Lionsgate um, uh, you know, in alignment with that, double A. You know what I mean? Anyway, this is, I told you it was going to be a long energy update, but here it is. And I do wish you so much smoothness, even though it's going to be bumpy to, through this time. And just know that you're going to come out the other end, as am I. And as I explained, I'm going to be at the top of that pyramid there waiting for you. Or maybe you're going to get there before me. Either way, I'll see you at the top. Peace.